Hey guys, Bondo here. Um, we're just getting ready to be done for the day. Over here at the Nadura Frost Protected Foundation Project. Take you for a little walk around it. We got it all ready to roll here. It's ready for concrete. We'll probably put a few kickers going out on these long walls out to the doors, but uh, the homeowner wants to put his perimeter drains in this weekend, so today is Friday. Um, it's it's noon, it's midday. We're gonna head to another job, but I um, just wanted to show you how we braced everything up. We basically put a two by six going both directions here, screwed it to the Nadura, and then put one flat like that to stiffen it out. You can see how we cut this block down on the inside. Basically, we saw cut this block out, and we're gonna place concrete right to here in our wall. And then we'll pour our floor up to the top of the nub, so our floor will rust on top of the Nadir wall. So we pre-cut those blocks before we put them in there. Um, we've done it a couple different ways, but I think this is the best way to do it. We spray foam the block to the footer. That's all that's holding it down. You can see it's spray foamed all along the bottom there. That's what's holding it. We got our T-corners all built. I did a video on how we did that. If you want to check it out. And you can see these. We connected these out here with some footer planks. Kind of holding things straight. So we are ready for concrete like I said. Just a few little braces here and there. It's a big project. It's not deep, but it's good size. So we started this Monday, guys. We started doing the footers Monday, and here we are. It's Friday, so it took us a week. And we could pour this today, but we can't get concrete. So we could have had this thing done in, uh, in a week. And it's a big project, like I said. Pretty much uh, three of us for the most part, and then uh, the homeowner's been helping us too. But it's pretty much been me, Biscuit, and Roy building this. We had Terry coming in uh, to help form the footers up on Monday. Big Papa helped us do that. You can see how straight that wall is, guys. That wall is 89 feet long, straight as an arrow. And you how we did the garage door openings here. We just screwed some boards around them to hold the concrete in place. We got that kicker board or that strong back board going on there to stiffen the wall. Same thing here, strong back board. Basically, we, we, uh, I asked the homeowner what he's using to frame his house and he's using two by six by 12. So we picked up 62 by six by 12s and we're just using them and then he's gonna take them We'll clean them good and he can still use them to build his house with. So this all gets filled in here, guys. Right up to the right up to where that cut is right there. And then we'll pour a floor. There's gonna be plumbing and stuff in there. This garage is gonna get filled up to the top of this right here. And then we will pour a four inch floor on top of that. You can kind of see where the door, the height of the doorways, that's gonna be where it's at. And then he can get, you know, a decent pitch coming out here away from the from his house and garage. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll get some footage of us pouring this thing uh, Tuesday. Here comes my skid steer, my SLV 65 Kubota. We got a new toy coming in here, guys. My buddy Terry went and picked it up in um, Massachusetts, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. He grabbed my trailer. He's slithering in here with it. My girlfriend says it's a toy. I go, no, it's a tool. It's not a toy. This is a tool. She's slightly used. She's got 43 hours, I think, on her. It's a SLV 65 2 high flow Kubota. Should be perfect for what we do. That's good, Terry. Look at that bad boy and I got a ditching bucket for the um, Yanmar 42 inch ditching bucket sweet look at that bad boy we're gonna use this for some work hey guys Bondo here this is what we're doing today we got the frost protected shallow foundation here 
and we're gonna be pouring it. We got everything ready to rock and roll. We got a bunch of penetrations that are going through there for different things. This one happens to be a floor drain for the garage, but there's a bunch of stuff going through. We got some sleeves in there for the septic. We got sleeves in there for some radiant heat that passes through the wall. Um, this is two courses high for the most part, except these back porches. These are dropped down a half course. They're a course and a half, but this here is uh, two courses. So there's gonna be foam board protecting this from frost down here over the footer. Uh, the perimeter drains are in. The homeowner did his own perimeter drain. Did a nice job on that. It's all stoned and ready to go. Um, we did spray foam the bottom course down. We got some two by six bracing on here and just some kickers going this way to hold the porch to the main house. Um, what else? Uh, there's two, the two by sixes go both ways. We got like a strong back. We got one screwed there and one on top like that. You can see we all the spray foam on the bottom. Strong backs all the way around it. Again, these porches are coarse and a half. We got these kickers coming out here, just some two by fours with some stakes holding it. There's not gonna be a lot of pressure on this wall moving it. So one detail I wanna show you inside the house. This is a slab house. It's gonna be built on a, right on a slab. So we cut this block down here with a skill saw and basically cut it right above that hinge, that Nadura hinge. We stayed out of that hinge and we're gonna be pouring to the top of the nub. So this gives you a, just about three and a half to four inches above. So when this comes over, this we're gonna pour this down to here today, the wall, and then when we pour our floor, it's gonna be up here. And we'll put our anchor bolts in the floor. We're not gonna put them in this section here, this house section. So you can see how that is. We'll put the rebar down in this hole here instead of up in here because it would have been above the concrete so we just slid it in these holes right here so that it's in there that way we got rebar all the way down we got vertical rebars in here and we got down in the bottom you can see where we cast them into the footer so it ties everything together and that's how she looks there's a front porch on here. This is gonna be the perimeter drain exit. He's gonna exit out to daylight over there. You wanna keep the bulk water away from these builds, guys. Water is your is an, your enemy with frost. This is another front porch that steps down a half a course. We got the generator. Roy, hook that generator up, buddy. Get it ready to rip. And get the vibrator all hooked up, ready to go. We're just waiting on mud, guys. Stay with us. It's going to be a nice little pour today. It's about 20 yards. We're using 3,500 pound concrete. Um, there's no fibers or nothing in it, but we did put some extra super plasticizer in it. And it's got real small stones in it. So um, we don't want the bigger stones. They'll tend to hang up on things. We are going to vibrate, internal vibrate everything on this job. Some people don't, but we always do. So like I said, stay with us. I'll get some footage for you. That I hear right in there, guys. Oh, conveyor truck rolling in. Frank, here comes the mud. Get your boots on, buddy. Let's go. That mud truck almost beat you here, buddy. Circle T, baby. 315-963-2231 in the central New York area for concrete. This is a conveyor truck, guys. We're going to pour this thing out 20 yards. Give her hell, Taco Bell. Get that mud in here, hmm? It's going to be a good day, YouTube. There's my buddy Frank. You ready to rip, Frank?
Hey guys, uh, we're here the next day after the pour. Just pulled all the um, two buys off of it. All the forms around the garage doors and stuff. This is what she looks like. We're just cleaning up. Come out real nice. Everything looks really nice and straight. This is an 89 foot wall. She's really straight. Biscuit's just taking a couple of the T-straps out. You can cut them off with a zip wheel too, guys. After you, after you take the screws out of them, you take a zip wheel and just cut them right off. But there's uh, the walls. Now we're gonna have to put foam insulation out here over that footer around the whole perimeter of this project because it's frost protected. Like I said, we're being frost protected. We're down. We're only going to be in the ground maybe 20, 24 inches, 20 to 24 inches. And our frost line is 48, so that foam will protect the footer. There's Rowan. Mom gave him a haircut. He looks a little goofy. Hey, right, Bob? You look a little goofy with your new haircut. Mom got a little carried away, didn't she, bud? Didn't she? Well, there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll try to get some more of this project for you as we progress here. Oh, this is that detail on the floor detail here. So like I showed you before, we cut this web down. And that's how we poured it. Now our floor is going to sit up here. So we're going to have... You know, it's going to sit on even with this nub so we will have a four inch floor over this wall and we will set these anchor bolts we'll use short anchor bolts and set them right in the floor here we'll stick them in the floor wet set them in the floor and we pour the floor but this is all got to be filled in guys up to uh not quite up to here two inches down from here because there will be insulation board in here two inches of foam board and uh, then our radiant heat. And we got some polystyrene over there. Um, closed cell insulation board. That's going to be for frost protection. And perimeter drains are in. And we are out of here. Beer 30 says the biscuit. The big biscuit says beer 30. Rotor, you ready? Come on, bud. Let's get out of here, buddy. <laughs>